So welcome to this video on populations and samples. So a population is a whole set of items that are of interest to you. A census is an observation or measure of the entire population. A sample is only measuring part of the population. And if you see a question where it says state the sampling unit, this just basically means the people who you are sampling. So if you're sampling um, people in school, your sampling units may be school students or school teachers. If you're sampling fruits, your sampling units will be maybe avocados or apples or just fruits in general. And your sampling frame is a list of sampling units. So for example, if you're taking a sample of a school, your sampling frame will be the register, which has the list of all pupils or database of all the staff members. Or if you're doing a sample on maybe washing machines and to see how like when they malfunction, your sampling frame may be a list of their serial numbers. So there are various strengths and limitations of using a census versus a sample. The biggest advantage of a census is that it gives you a completely accurate result because you're asking every single person or every single product you're using it in your census, it gives you a completely accurate result free of bias. However, censuses can be time consuming and expensive if you have a really large population and it cannot be used when the testing process destroys the item. For example, if you're testing at what um, voltage ovens explode you can't use a um, census of those ovens otherwise you'd have none left to mark it off and it's hard to process large quantity of data because yeah it's just going to take long sampling advantages are that it's less time consuming and expensive than a census because obviously you're not asking every single person or you're not measuring every single thing you don't have to pay people to be you're not going to have to pay the whole population to be in your sample so it is less time consuming and less expensive than a census fewer people have to respond or well, that is a given because sampling is asking less people it's not it's not asking the entire population and less data to process than a census obviously because you're only asking some people and not everyone however disadvantages is that the data may not be as accurate it doesn't mean it can't be as accurate it means it may not be is accurate for example if you have a, like a really large population but you're only sampling 10 people it's not obviously it's not going to be as accurate as if you were going to measure the entire population however disadvantages is that the some another disadvantage may be that the sample may not be large enough to give information about small subgroups of the population right now let's look at breaking down some questions so a supermarket wants to test the delivery of avocados for ripeness by cutting them in half suggest a reason why the supermarket should not test all of the avocados in a delivery well obviously if it's a supermarket testing ripeness for avocados you're going to destroy the avocados the whole point of a supermarket is that you're going to sell stuff if you've destroyed all of them you've got none left to sell so i'm going to write none left to sell why are you going to take a census of product if it involves if it involves destroying the product that doesn't make any sense and then the supermarket tests a sample of five avocados and finds that four of them are right they estimate that 80 percent of the avocados in the delivery are ripe suggest one way that the supermarket could improve their estimate well Testing for avocados, if it's a big supermarket, obviously they're going to have loads and loads of avocados. Testing four is not going to be enough. You're going to need to test a lot more than four. So you could say, as a reason, use a larger sample size. Now, obviously, if you use a larger sample size, you're more likely to get a different result and a more accurate result of that. Okay, so now a school uses a census to investigate the dietary requirements of its students. Explain what is meant by a census. So that means an observation or a measure of every member of the population. So I'm going to write a measure of every member. That is not how you spell member. That is how you spell member of population 
that give one advantage and one disadvantage of schools using a census well completely accurate result is our main advantage or you could say free of bias something like that try to be more in context in an exam setting and one disadvantage of a school using a census time consuming if you're going to take a census in a school that's going to take ages if you ask if, say if you go to a big secondary school maybe you have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 pupils. That's just long. Why are we doing that? Take a sample instead. Now, a factory makes safety harnesses for climbers and has an order to supply 3,000 harnesses. The buyer wishes to know that the load at which the harness breaks exceed a certain figure. Suggest a reason why a census would not be used for this purpose. Now, these questions use a lot of common sense. If we're thinking about this, if we're using a census, it's going to destroy the product. Now, what's wrong with destroying the product? That means that the climbers will have none left to use. Climbers will have none to use. So it just seems silly to use a census, don't you think? And then now B requires a little bit more thinking. Factory claims that the harnesses are safe for loads up to 250 kilograms. Use the sample data to comment on this claim. Looking at the sample data, I can see that 250 kilograms lies right in the middle. What this means is because the median is 250 kilograms, you would expect half of them to be able to deal with a weight of more than 250 kilograms and half of them to break at a weight of less than 250 kilograms so if i'm going to write this in a sentence i might say claim is misleading why median of samples So what does that mean? It means we'd expect half of harness brakes or half of harnesses to break at a load of less than a median. then suggest one way in which the company can improve their prediction the main answer of improving predictions is thinking about sample sizes they've used a sample of how many one two three four so they can use a much larger sample size to get a better result so use larger sample size right now so the final um, question that we're going to look at before we get into the actual specifics of different sampling methods is this one so a city council wants to know what people think about its recycling center the council decides to carry out a sample survey to learn the opinions of residents write down a reason why the council should not take a census well that's just going to be time consuming way too time consuming so that is one reason you could say time consuming it's not the only reason you could say, it's just the first thing that came to my head. Suggest a suitable sampling frame. Well, it can just be list of people who live in a city, list of residents. C. Identify the sampling units. Well, if it's a list of residents, that's our sampling frame. Then our sampling units are just going to be the residents of city and that's easy that's just common sense now this diagram shows all of the sampling methods that you need to know for GCSE statistics as you can see there are quite a lot 
and what i've realized is if i put them all into one video this video is going to take absolutely ages and some of you may only need to know what stratified sampling means or some of you may only struggle with quota sampling so i'm going to break all of these into into different videos and you can just pick the ones that you will benefit from watching this probably came from the textbook but i don't really teach using the textbook because the textbook for gcse statistics is just dry